Hey, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to BMW E90 HQ. It's Will coming at you with another video. So today we're going to be changing this, um, what you call it, the, uh, the low pressure fuel pump sensor. So uh, it's not in the back of the car like the uh, pump is. It's actually going to be down and underneath the throttle body there. So let me get some, let me get some light going here. So it's down underneath the throttle body there and um, so hopefully it won't be that hard to get to. Um, right now we're removing this top section right here. So this part here, uh, pretty easy to do. I've done it in tons of videos, but anyway, a uh, short way to do it is pop these plastic covers that go right here up. You're gonna find eight mils that go right there on each side, remove those. Remove your six, eight mils that uh, hold the cabin filter down and then re go ahead and remove this and then pull out the other piece. Uh, oh, and undo these clips that hold it down right here. You can see on the left I've got a broken clip so it's only held up by the two on the right. And at um, that point I'm gonna have to take a break here to let the car cool off because it's quite hot, but well, I'll probably get the DCIs out of the way, but uh, then I'll have to let it cool off and then uh, I'll get to it. All right, so at this point I have the cabin filter and cowl out of the way. The DCIs are out and I can see pretty much where I'm going to be trying to go with this so uh, basically if you look behind the throttle body there you can just catch a hint of like a black thing with a clip on it now that's like a, I think that's a wire like a plug that goes into this harness that's gonna have to come out of the way and then just underneath that is where we're gonna be working so Obviously this charge pipe is going to have to come out, the throttle body is going to have to come out of the way. So um, it's pretty hot right now. Um, I think I'm going to go inside and print off a few receipts for um, items I purchased for the car just to add to my folder uh, and leave the hood popped. Come back, see how it is. If it's still hot, maybe I'll wash the car a little bit and then uh, I'll get to working on it. So basically I'm just waiting for it to calm, cool down because as you can see, it's not going to be that hard. Once the throttle body's out of the way, we'll have about a couple inches of space between it and the between the manifold and the charge pipe to go through. And I think with a pretty good, uh, you know, with my wrenches, I've got pretty big wrenches. This uh, sensor, I think we're going to use a 24 to get it off and a 27 to put the new one on because it, it is an updated part. As you can see, all right, everybody. So as you can see, the throttle body is out, and that black box that is sitting there between the uh, manifold and the uh, charge pipe right there, you know, in behind them and below it, I mean, uh, we're gonna have to disconnect those wires, kind of move that out of the way. And our sensor, if you can see, right there, there's like a little plug behind the box. It's right there. So all we have to do is uh, free up a little bit of space. We don't really have to remove this, just get it a little bit out of the way. And, um, Okay, so for removing the throttle body though, let me get to that real quick. So, you know, it, it sits kind of like this on the manifold. So those bottom bolts are really hard to access. Uh, but a, a three inch extension, you know, and move some play with the charge pipe, uh, you know, disconnecting the charge pipe, moving it around a little bit will uh, help free up access to those two bolts right there. Uh, so the throttle body looks to be pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of carbon, carbon scoring on the back. See if I don't have anything around here I can maybe clean that up with. Uh, you will have to remove a vacuum hose from this side. It's one of those ones with those little clips you push with your fingers that uh, they get harder and harder to push over time, but uh, it will come off. Just have patience. Uh, same thing for the plug. It will come out. Just have patience. Uh, be very careful not to break it at the same time. And then uh, find somewhere safe to uh, kind of set this out of the way. And uh, we'll figure out how this right here disconnects and um, get that sensor from behind it. So um, really all we gotta do is loosen this up a little bit. So uh, probably just disconnecting a few of the wires that plug into it and moving it out of the way will be fine. But before we start messing with the wires, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on the battery just to be safe. Okay guys, so that box was literally beyond easy. I used one hand and just pushed some weight down on it and it just slid right from, there was a clip right here. Uh, I can show you what I was just doing and uh, it just slid right out. I just uh, disconnected this one because it looked like it had too short of a wire, but honestly, you probably don't even need to do that. All right, now, as you can see now, this 
little guy right here is what we're going to be changing. So uh, first step will be to disconnect the power input from him. Alright guys, so this is the new sensor. So I wound up actually disconnecting the wire uh, for it, where it connects to this box. And then uh, the zip tied to another wire from the factory. So I went ahead and I disconnected that zip tie. Uh, or I mean cut it, you know, and I'm going to put a new zip tie on it. Because I couldn't see the the sensor well enough to figure out where the clip was on it, even with the flashlight and everything. Uh, so I just I just went ahead and did it from that end so that the wire wouldn't twist around itself. And then uh, just wrenched it on out with a 24 millimeter wrench. And uh, it was pretty easy. Uh, having a ratcheting wrench would probably be more ideal, but a, a regular wrench is perfectly fine and was in fact what I used. 24 millimeter wrench. So I believe this one, it, it's slightly bigger. It is a revised part number. You can see I just reused the O-ring. It looked to be fine. Uh, it did not provide an O-ring, so I, I assume that they, come on focus, expect for you to reuse the other one. Uh, I mean, it's just had fuel on it, so it should be fine. Um, went on easily, came off the other one easily. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrench this back on. and finger thread it in as far as I can. Uh, it was not on very tight. I mean, just a tiniest little bit of force broke it off, so I'm not gonna over tighten this. I'm just gonna tighten it till it's it's snug. Maybe not even quite snug. Uh, just till it's on there, you know, till I know it's not going anywhere. Then uh, zip tie the wires back together and start reassembling this mess. Uh, this is how you do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sort of document putting it back together, just the important steps, like things you might forget, like, you know, all the wires and stuff that you would have disconnected to get to this point, sensors, hoses, etc., etc., just to make sure that I uh, don't have any issues. And also, um, my diverter valves, I disconnected them. I don't think I showed that in the video. Uh, I just, in fact, only disconnected the end that connects to the manifold, just so that that could be kind of out of the way. Uh, they're still plugged into the diverter valves themselves. So, uh, once I get the sensor back in, I can go ahead and slide that harness back on. Um, then after that, put the throttle body back in. Then stick my DCI's in and put the cowl back on and we'll be good to drive. And uh, we will see after that how this fixed my issues. Or if, I mean obviously the sensor will be reading hopefully. If it's not, then we've got other problems. But hopefully we don't find out that we have a bad low pressure fuel pump. Hopefully it's actually just fine. Alright guys, of course it wouldn't be a real DIY without having to take off the belly pan to get a bolt that you lost under the engine bay. So I have one of the throttle body bolts go down. Um, anyway, figured now would be about as good a time as any just to check in where I'm at. So obviously reconnecting the wires, putting in the new sensor, uh, incredibly easy. Uh, you know, so easy a caveman could do it. Yeah, so anyway, I've got them all, three of them are in, I'm about to put the fourth one in, then tighten it all down. Uh, you will have to reconnect the plug, the plug here for the throttle body, right here. Um, I'll get that in a second when I have two free hands. Obviously, you're going to have to also reconnect the vacuum lines over there. Uh, if you do disconnect your diverter valves, don't forget about them. And then, obviously, get your charge pipe back on. Alright, so as you can see, we have a reading right there. It says 70.9. So I've already started the car. I know it's going to idle. I haven't driven it yet, so that's what we're going to do right now. So, let's do this. I think uh, as long as the economy is... Let's turn off that news. Let's PR for all y'all. All right, so it's supposed to just constantly target 72. That's what it looks like it's doing. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive, see what happens here. Uh, let me... Hey guys, do you guys have any suggestions about what to do with this wire? Uh, I don't know if this setup is what I'm gonna keep. Uh, I might get something where I can mount it onto the vent. I don't know. Anyway, that flash is glaring like none other off there, but it's dark and it's raining. Or not raining, but it was raining. Anyway, let's go drive. Let's see what this does. Alright, so as you can see, just kind of cruising around and driving at a reasonable rate. Uh, this does stay pretty 
close to 72. So, uh, so far it looks like it's good. Obviously, since I'm holding this with my hand, it's kind of hard to uh, focus and try to do like a, a pull. Plus, we're still only at 149 degree oil temperature, so we definitely want that to get a little higher. Plus, as you can see, this road's too wet. So, let's see if we can find a dry road. If we can't, well, we're about to be on the interstate in a minute. We can at least get the revs up a little bit on there and see what, what happens. All right, so the question here is going to be, do I notice any kind of difference uh, with the sensor change and working properly? Um, I don't know. It might, I feel like I do, but it might just be placebo effect. Uh, I really don't know how the system works. You know, look, you can see it's holding pretty well. Uh, super dry road here. Um, anyway, so, so I... I don't know. It could be a placebo effect. I don't, like I said, I don't know how the system really works. So I don't know if the, the two systems, like the pump and the sensor, are communicating with each other or if that sensor just gives a reading so that the car knows the health of the pump. Or, uh, you know, I, I don't know how it works. So if they're, you know, if they're actually talking to each other, then this should have made an improvement. If they, if it just monitors, then it probably didn't make any difference at all. So if you know how the system actually works, then you would be a better person to, uh, you know, to answer that question. But I, I feel like I feel a little, I feel a little bit better. Uh, I certainly feel better knowing that my low pressure fuel pump is in good working order. So if you guys run into this problem, this is exactly how you change that sensor. Uh, everything was way easier than I thought it was going to be, except removing the throttle body, which was not that much more difficult than I was expecting, but it, it wasn't easy either, just because of how it's mounted and so the upper half of it kind of blocks the lower half. Anyway guys, if you found this video informative, please leave the video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.